<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'll uh, call this meeting uh, for February the 20th, 2024, to order. Result of the agenda for the February 20th, 2024, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Bobbick. Oh, um, sorry, go ahead. Question, I don't see the accommodation tax on here and I believe we tabled it to February 20th. So I know we're probably not ready to have our second reading yet, but can that just be moved without it coming back and being retabled or do we have to add that to the agenda to? We don't have to uh, bring it back onto the agenda if it's not ready, right? No, not technically. We yeah. did table it to that meeting. Right. That's why I just wanted to clarify yeah. before we get going. Yeah, we're not. The, the it's still in discussion and, and meeting with committee, so it's yeah, not ready to come back. That's my fault. But uh, if council isn't ready, then we're done. Okay. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Resolve the minutes of the February the sixth, two thousand and twenty-four regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor White. Seconded by Councillor Edward. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We have um, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio is away tonight, and so is Councillor um, <coughs> uh, Boychuk, and uh, Councillor Powell is not able to attend. She's in a meeting tonight as well. She may could attend actually a little bit later. Okay, on the agenda for receptions and delegations, 4.1, our Swan River Fire Department, which on camera right now, unfortunately, we can't, uh, our viewers can't see our contingent of our uh, fire crew here tonight, but I do welcome you. As you all know, we have recently formed the new Swan Valley Fire Department. I don't think it's a time of, dis uh, of closure, rather a bittersweet transition from the Swan River Fire Department. The evolution of our fire fighting services into a regional force marks a significant step forward in ensuring the continued safety and well-being of our residents, businesses, and industries across the valley. And none of this would be possible without you and your con many contributions, efforts, and sacrifices. We are in good hands. Today we gather to express our deepest thanks to each and every member here, also to the many who couldn't make it here tonight. And I have one, uh, and also a point of volunteering or have contributed to the Swan River Fire Department. <coughs> it's hard to express in words what it takes to do a job of a firefighter, but I don't believe one can unless they have experienced the situations that you've all been in, and I'm not alone, and I think it's fair to speak on behalf of the residents of the town of Swan River and the Swan River Valley when I say we couldn't be more proud of the legacy you have created and the courage, dedication, and professionalism that has continued to be shown throughout the years. To commemorate your efforts, tonight I am going to present a plaque of service um, to our members here tonight for all to enjoy and to, uh, to, to look at and uh, to remember. And when I, when I look at it, I'll just read it here, recognition of service, commemor commemorating uh, the Swan River Fire Department, recognizing outstanding service to the town of Swan River and surrounding municipalities. And the date, May the 11th, or, uh, sorry, 1908 to October the 12th, 2023. And when I think about the date, 1908 to now. I think of the members that have served for the town of Swan River and, and the surrounding areas that are no longer with us as well. And we thank them also for the path that they have taken us. And I know when I was a younger person, I remember Mr. Hickman uh, being a big part of the fire uh, team. And I know there's a, a picture of him also in the fire department. I, I think of people like that and kind of like the, the trailblazers and the people that have paved the way to pour you and, the, and what you will do uh, in, the, in the years to come and teaching uh, members to protect our community. So again, we thank each of you 
for your service and your continued dedication to protecting and serving our Swan River Valley. On behalf of Council, the people of the town of Swan River and the Valley, I thank you and we give you a round of applause. Gentlemen, thank you. And if you want to stick around, we have more than should be happy. Oh, come on. Free water at the end. Love you guys. Bye. You, know, you have a you have an emergency. You may have to take it. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Guys. We appreciate it. All right, so moving on to uh, six and communications. 6.1, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So this is on the, um, the round table discussions. Yeah, the uh, district reading is, if they're just looking for a representative to, if we we're willing to send one to their discussions on how to improve accessibility and availability. Go ahead. Um, are, we're at the talking point because we haven't moved it or seconded it yeah. yet, so I just want to make sure we're I, at discussion. I, I, I don't see uh, a resolution, oh. so. No, it's just a communication. Yeah, so that's what I thought. So yeah, it's just okay. communications right now. There's no resolution to approve or anything, so. Oh. Well then, yes, I would like to speak. Okay. Um, I do think this is extremely important. Um, I have been attending these TONS meetings since I think about October or November, uh, the think tank meetings. And they are literally a representation across the province. We've got rural, we've got urban, we've got uh, people involved in different aspects of services re that require transportation. And as you may have noticed in the letter, I believe it was, but um, Russell Binsgarth has recently had a round table with them to help improve and expand on their handy transit and transportation services. And I think it's vital that we not only represent and request one of these round tables, but for all Valley. Because uh, Mountain doesn't even have handy transit anymore. They had to let theirs go a while ago because it was cost prohibitive. They just could not afford to keep it up. Uh, Swan Valley West is linked to us through shared services, so depending on how that contract goes moving forward, um, that'll, I guess, determine where they sit with Handy Transit. Uh, Minnetonas Bozeman, they're kind of in a, between a rock and a hard place when I've talked to their council, and they're either going to have to increase the price, which then might drop them below getting that revenue they need to get that funding to keep their handy van operational, 
So I really do think we need to take the initiative to not only have the G4 representation for a round table, but also to have our services to seniors as well as maybe representatives from the boards of the senior centers in each of the communities at that round table to discuss. Because as of the 2021 census stats, we have 1,030 uh, residents that are over the age of 65 just in the town of Swan River. So how do we provide the affordable, accessible transportation needs for them to continue to age gracefully in their homes? So I think it is actually important. I'm personally willing to volunteer and possibly White here is also on the Manitoba Age Friendly Committee with me to represent for the town of Swan River in regards to a round table. But I do think it is vital that we take them up on it and start brainstorming how we can improve our services to meet the needs of our seniors and those with disabilities. Can, can we ask um, uh, Ms. Rod, is it Roddick, to uh, maybe consider um, coming to maybe our next G4 meeting and that way then they can maybe um, make, uh, so all, if, if all the municipalities can be involved with this then maybe they can make a, a presentation before all of us because I'm assuming that this has gone to all the municipalities. I, I don't know that. Uh, yes, we can absolutely. And, and maybe if you can, just share the correspondence with the other uh, CAOs as well, prior to that going uh, that request to, to her. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Six point two. <clears throat> Result of the building permits seventy twenty three to one twenty four through three twenty four with a total estimated value of $241,000 being received. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Oh, go ahead. The only question I ask is like, okay, so we, we see these and stuff like that, but um, they're ready to move house. So what, what exactly does that mean? So it's what they're they're building these yeah. homes on these properties, then they're going to be moving them. So they have to have a permit in order to build them on those properties, on that property. So that's why you can see it's 1621 Main Street. Right. It's a commercial area where they're actually building RTA, RTNs. And then eventually once they're done, uh, built, then they will move them to another spot. Okay. They need to have a permit in order to build them in the town as well. Okay. Am I correct with that? Yeah, that's totally correct. And uh, I would just add, and the reason we inspect them here is because there's inspections that have to be done before the drywall is put up. So we can't just leave it to wherever they go because then they wouldn't be able to inspect the plumbing. So this way, the plumbing is inspected, vapor barrier, uh, insulation, everything behind the drywall. So that wherever it moves to, they can see, okay, these were inspected. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.3. Yeah, this was just for council. I didn't, I was unaware that there was already a... Uh, uh, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, so I was going to bring this up in my, um, in my privilege. So um, there's no resolution here right now because it's not actually decided on yet. No. So there's some work in progress on that. So I'll bring it up in my... Um, in my privilege. <clears throat> Go ahead. Are we still allowed to speak to it? Well, there's no resolution to speak to. So, it's just something that the, um, the school division and the municipalities are working on, um, on this rec reconciliation uh, piece. But it's still, the heads of council with the school division are still working on that. So. Yeah. I guess there there was a miscommunication. I went ahead and did this without. I just did. So I haven't committed anything. There's no, there's been no commitments, but uh, I was unaware that there was already an issue started. So if, if that's the way they want to go, totally fine. Yeah, and and this can you know, potentially what this might be could be yeah. at that later at that time. But right. what we're working on with the school division is is a little bit different. So. Okay. Like it would be very worthwhile. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're still waiting for uh, on that. We're just waiting for more uh, 
information, um, I guess, partnership with the municipalities. So uh, we'll move on to 7 and 7.1. Resolve, resolve that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I was, just had a question with regards to the water main breaks. Do we know the cause or reasons for them? Uh, so the one on Crescent Drive, that was, or sorry, Centennial Drive, the bolts had uh, actually just rusted completely away. It's a cast iron pipe, so every flange is uh, bolted together, and they had completely rusted away. Um, so then any little shift, or any little pressure change or whatever, and then it can shift and then it starts leaking. And uh, so that's why we do our renewals. And then the other ones were all uh, service lines. So there's a main stop, and then there's a curve stop. There's the two valves. The main stop is under the road and right on the water main. And then the curb stop is uh, at the property line. And that's the one that comes to surface so we can turn off the water for a house if they need to do repairs or whatever. And uh, just over time, especially the copper ones, because the copper isn't super thick. And at the main stop and the curb stop, there's a little bit of turbulence. And so over time, it just wears through and gets thin. Uh, that eventually they let go. Sometimes they happen two or three in like a three week period and then we'll go like a month or two without any. Uh, but this one it kind of just happened all four at once. But there wasn't any specific like pressure spike or anything like that that I can point to. The one on Centennial, is that coming up for renewal soon in yeah. that area? Yeah. Is that this year or? That's the plan. That will be part of the budget discussion. Okay. Okay. Any? Oh, go ahead, Councilor. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just wondering about the uh, EMF stuff that the technology that was being used at the lagoon that hypothetically would uh, cause us to use less chemical to reclaim whatever that particular term is. And from my perspective, certainly reduced a lot of the bouquet. And, uh, using that word very useful. Have you had the opportunity to determine, quantify how much money we would save if we went to that technology? And if you have, will you share that with us and have you got that information to the manufacturer? Uh, yeah, I sent that to them and there was a report that went to council a couple months ago. I can resend that. Do you remember the number offhand? Uh, I think yes, it, yes. I think it came out pretty neutral, close to neutral, because the cost for leasing it uh, would be about the equivalent that we saved on the chemical. Uh, but the other benefit is that it reduces the uh, odor out there and uh, lets us discharge quicker in the spring because it gets the call forms down, so it helps with the capacity issues. So mm -hmm. money-wise, it probably won't save anything, like overall but uh, it'll help with the capacity of the lagoon and with the uh, order of the lagoon. Will you be making a recommendation for council to act on based on that uh, information? Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, pull up that report and I'll resend it and then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can add that. Here. Okay, that's fine if you would do that, please. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Okay, Council uh, reports. I'll start with uh, Council White. I'm that busy. Uh, February 16th, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting with uh, Brandon Stock, who was representing the nurses, specifically the healthcare aid people. Uh, we've, uh, Gabe was there, Deputy Mayor Mori was there, the Star and Time, thank you, Mr. Jeremy. And uh, it was National Caregivers Day, interestingly. And that was the day we gave 121 health care packages out. Now, for the sake of council, I have copies of those packages here. And there's basically a, things that the local community has given up. For example, hotels, gas, bowling, swimming, and the new ski hill. So that doesn't cost any money until the person redeems it. And the ones with the doctors is a little more expensive. But 
Uh, we got a letter back from Mr. S Mr. Stock who said that the nurse the health carries were overwhelmed. He said that's the first time anybody's ever acknowledged it. Councilor Bobbick, you've had a lot to do with that sitting in the back as a puppeteer making some of those things happen. I appreciate that. So thank you for that. On February the 16th, Deputy Mayor Morio and I had the opportunity. It was a spontaneous thing. Uh, we were coming out of the hospital. We could see the police station, so we walked across to introduce ourselves to the new staff sergeant we know well. And uh, he was pretty excited for us to stop in and offer our help and appreciative. And uh, I offered on behalf of the council unofficially that uh, we're here to listen, we're here to work with, anytime he wants a hand. And he's pretty excited about that new job because now he can do things before he couldn't do so. That was a, a spontaneous and a neat meeting. On February the 17th, I went to the Immigrant Services uh, Slay Day at uh, Taylor School. I'm going to guess there were about 100 plus immigrant people there, packed. Lots of fun, beautiful weather, children having fun, cultures being exchanged. And I love that stuff and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Flamin locally, uh, Mike Anderson and his team for providing the cooks and the buns and the hot chocolate. Just a fun day for people to get to know one another and feel more uh, part of our community. So next year, maybe we'll bring the whole council there and maybe we'll cook. For example, I like to cook. So that's it, sir. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Bobbin. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, attended a call meeting last week, last Tuesday to be exact. Uh, lots of interesting conversations with the Legacy Committee. I do believe they're on the right track. I do believe Council needs to sit with them and not a, like, to make a special meeting or go to their meetings. I think there needs to be information exchanged. I do believe you're either standing still, going backwards, or moving forwards. I think at this time we need to make a decision which direction we're going in and help them along. Uh, also had a watershed meeting attended. Uh, we've got our intern budget done. Uh, looking like a good year. We should be handling about $1.6 million with, prospectively. Depends on how many more uh, projects we get lined up. Uh, also, watershed is looking at, uh, I would call it a come and go tea for counselors in the spring sometime so you can all come and get informed on it and I would stress for management to come to is something once you kind of figure out what's going on here and how much water is protected and stuff like that it, it entertains the idea of how important they are. Uh, excuse me. Uh, just I have some other stuff but I'll just mention that uh, to members' Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Medwin. Um, well, I had to actually cancel or reschedule a few meetings because I got uh, hit with the flu the other week. Uh, so I was in recovery. I did get to the Cal meeting though, and um, I did not make a couple others because I had to attend while well, I was away attending Trappers Festival. But uh, Biggest one is I actually was just out of service to seniors board meeting today and that transportation uh, is a topic that's on our agenda there and how we can better service our seniors because it's really hard to really any any services that we want to provide beyond the meal programs within the facilities the barrier is transportation because you're limited like we offer a coffee and a chat once a month in three of our municipalities but would more people come if we could actually offer affordable transportation to get there so um, both uh, the board for services to seniors as well as the uh, board for the senior center have kind of put uh, requests forward advocating for a shuttle service so I did have to reschedule my meeting with CAO Pool, which I've just confirmed for Thursday this week, so we can kind of talk some more about that and see what we can do throughout this year to make that more affordable, more accessible, and yeah, meet the needs of our aging population. And I think that's about it, since I had to skip a few meetings. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, on the 16th, of course, we attended the cow, and yes, I totally agree with Councillor Bobbick. Um, we do have to get on top of this legacy committee because they are, you know, they are waiting to hear from us in lots of ways. So I think that's really important to keep them all 
involved and um, on par with what we're trying to do here. Um, I was unable to attend a RISE meeting. Um, I know we have another one coming up, but there's lots of things happening there. And the other thing was we have ha attended a couple of library meetings. Um, we've got the ad out for looking for a librarian and um, head librarian, of course. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, we have a transportation meeting coming up this week, so that's okay. Uh, for myself, uh, in the last couple of weeks, um, I, uh, I uh, attended a vet board meeting. Uh, it was pretty short and sweet, this one. It was basically on um, tendering out our snow removal uh, and cleaning for the, for the next year, and also for our uh, tendering out the, uh, uh, the, I guess, the summer maintenance, the grass and so forth, uh, maintenance of the um, facility as well. Um, I also want to say that there has been, through some grants by the province of Manitoba in the last year, on um, some uh, uh, equipment that the board was able to purchase uh, from the, uh, through grants, uh, like I said, through the province of Manitoba. So we're lucky enough to be able to buy some very important uh, equipment for our vets as well. So uh, uh, we're very uh, happy and, and uh, grateful that the province of Manitoba provided some of these grant monies to the, to the vet. Uh, board in our building. Um, also met our committee for the Swan Valley Fire Department. We met with uh, uh, the board to discuss our uh, budget for 2024, um, which has had been passed by the board uh, last week. And so uh, council and our administration, will, I'm assuming might have that by now, the chair probably has passed that on. So council will have an opportunity to see what that budget looks like in the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm sure, with through uh, uh, budget deliberations and so forth. Uh, I, I would let uh, Deputy Mayor Morio speak more on that if you have any other questions, but uh, I can also answer them too if there is any other questions at any point in time. Uh, also, uh, CEO Poole and I actually had an opportunity to meet with uh, uh, an investor or a, uh, an entrepreneur that who has been working on uh, in communities, uh, building uh, what he said, tiny homes or places where uh, affordable housing and uh, uh, he's actually looking at uh, perhaps uh, expanding into the town of Swan River. So we had some preliminary discussions of what that might look like and some properties where he might be interested in, in setting this, uh, this adventure up. So he still has a, a lot of uh, you know, process to go through. But it's interesting to hear what his product looks like and, and how he could uh, perhaps even help with the, uh, the shortage, if I can say, with the potential of more uh, nurses and nurses' aides, and that was part of the discussion uh, with that, as well as immigrants and so forth, uh, uh, an opportunity for uh, any uh, housing or affordable housing that we can have in Swan River. So this person is uh, very, um, what can I say, he's aggressive in his company and they're actually building homes, a lot of these modular homes in uh, uh, Nipua. So they're, uh, they're, like I said, very aggressive and working on a lot of uh, plans of what these homes will look like. And, and his comments were they're not cheap homes, you know, like they're not built cheap, they're made by uh, CSA uh, 277 standards. So they are uh, good homes of Beltwell, and even talked about hotels and, and them actually building modular hotels, So, which was kind of interesting, but I'm sure we'll hear more of uh, this gentleman in the, in the months and maybe perhaps in the year to come. And the rest for me will be in my privilege. Uh, CAO Pool, or sorry, yeah, uh, no, actually I'll go to Student Council or Student Council Campana, if she has anything to report. I don't have too much. I uh, oh, I forget what it was called, but that meeting I attended at the Veterans uh, Hall, the G8 meeting. Um, I was uh, I was talking to uh, Paul the other day, or on the day of the meeting, and I was really interested by that the discussions of um, uh, around what we can do to help, like, homelessness. I know that, like, in the paper, especially ever since um, his, what's it called, 
his article about uh, Ms. Cook, there's been a lot of discussion about what we can do about homelessness here in the Valley. And every week in the paper, it's there's been people submitting more and more uh, ideas. And I do have some ideas of my own. And um, But anything official that I could report for this meeting, I don't have much. Uh, that's just more what I've been doing in my spare time. Okay, good, thank you. And you know, I want to say uh, again, thank you for attending the G8 meeting. Um, you know, it was good to see you there and to, you know, participate and, and uh, take in what, not only what the town of Swan River works on, but you can hear what the Valley and the school division uh, works on together as a group. So thank you again for attending. My pleasure. Uh, CEO Poole. Yes. Uh, just to elaborate, Youth Councilor Compound is uh, expressing interest in the community safety and well-being plan. So we have, we'll give her an information package, and you'll be invited to the uh, advisory committee meeting. The date just hasn't been set yet. So once we have that, all okay. Other than that, I have a, a written report for council. There's lots on there. A lot of those topics are going to be discussed next Tuesday at our budget meeting. Uh, but through the the, I guess the glaring uh, highlights on our budget, a lot of them as you'll see, won't get too much into them today. That's all right. Thank you. Actually, I, I forgot one thing on mine, but it, it's uh, still a continued discussion with the, the Reeves and the uh, partnering municipalities on the GIS. Uh, I did speak with uh, a couple of the Reeves this morning, and uh, uh, there's, they're going to have. Uh, their municipalities have further discussion and actually hopefully um, make some commitments so that we can uh, actually schedule this meeting with the minister. So that's that's coming uh, quick, I hope. And the next week we'll hear a little bit more on that. So uh, since sorry, I did forget one thing on under, under unfinished business in my report, we have still not sent a response to Thunder Hill for the request for funding. So. Nothing really came out of the G4, but I don't know if we wanted to send a response to them stating a time issue or after budget deliberations during the I think that maybe perhaps in your budget meeting next week when you guys, uh, council has a chance to uh, look at the, the budget a little bit closer, then maybe uh, you can have a chance to maybe make a decision or a discussion at that time. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we have a question. Relative to uh, Mr. Poole's report, he and I have had a discussion, and you can remove not confirmed off the uh, Economic Development Committee, the BDO Infrastructure Program. Thanks. To Mr. Meyer. Okay. Go ahead, Council uh, Medwood. Also, under the Unfinished Business, the Ag Society Agreement, um, we're waiting to meet with the Ag Society. So, as the ball kind of sitting in their court, do we need to remind them? or what's sort of the status with that? Uh, really, it's, you know, we've, we've been busy with the, the lawsuit. Like, we're gonna go through these things on budget and how much of a workload these things are going to be. The, we just have instruction from the Ag Society, don't do anything without meeting with us. So we, we, we wanna get a committee from council going, sort of the process is getting a committee from council to meet with them first discuss, bring everything back to the table, see what they would like. But we drafted agreement and I guess what we have from them is that they want to meet very first. So we just need to get a committee and some dates and then we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Eight, eight point one. Receive resolve, sorry not receive, resolve that the town of Swan River 2024 2025 accessibility plan be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Edward. I have a couple of things that come out to me. Uh, the first one being under the accessibility achievements, it says successful handy transit program. I think that might be a little bit relative because Yes, we're meeting the um, revenue quota in order to receive our funding, but at the same time, um, when we have 1,030 
residents over the age of 65 and we have less than 100 a month using handy transit I I look at those numbers and I say are we really as successful as we could be so as I've mentioned this is going to be a project for me this year to see if we can't improve those numbers and that service so it's more affordable uh, for majority of our seniors and folks on fixed incomes um, the other one is under action to compliance with accessibility regulation 47 2022 so it indicates here that we're going to do an annual audit of our website and social media for segments entries and photos which are inaccessible for people using readers I guess my question is how exactly are we going to do that and the second part to that question is is it possible on our website or social media to have a read aloud option for people with visibility issues that might also because I know when I look on my counselor laptop I can have this document read aloud to me but when I look at this document on my phone I can't so I'm just wondering, is that actually something that we could do on our website and or social media that might also help our folks with visibility issues? Counselor uh, Paul. I think there's a cost to that for sure. Yeah. I, I believe and it's, it's, it's not a cheap, I believe. No, it, we, we would have done it, but it's cost. So that, that's one of the things that are gonna come up in budget. Okay, and how are we gonna audit to make sure that they are visible through well, yep. I guess we'll we will look to the to the guidelines or the program for exactly what we you know what we want to do and compare compare our goals to what we're doing. I can't none of that has been built yet, but uh, it's what we want to do. Okay, this is why. Councilman, that I appreciate everything you just said there. It's all important to all of us. A thousand over sixty-five. What was the number that asked for it? Was it second number? I, I don't have the monthly report in front of me, but I think the last time I looked at the report, the highest number I saw on the annual one from last year was, I think, 72. That's fine. Uh, is there any way, and I don't expect you to know the answer, is there any way that we can access numbers that need that? To, you know, obviously, the thousand don't all need it. I'm one of them. Uh, is there any way to access to people who need and or request? Uh, well, that's why I'm advocating for us to diversify our board for the handy transit van because right now all we have is council representing the handy van and none of us require that service or even qualify for it. So that's one of the things I want to meet with CAO Pool about to see if we can't get some diversity on that board so that we have people that represent the seniors and those who would actually qualify for use so we can actually Councillor White, I'll remind you to ask your question through the chair, and Councillor Medwood can respond after. Okay. okay. Anything further? Well, that 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 is obviously the key to it all. How many need it? And how many request it? And it, it appears that the board isn't able to have that data, so there must be other venues, other mediums, to find that data. Okay. Thank you. No matter what they are. Go ahead. One more thing that I would like to see added to this is under action five for curb slash ramp review. It indicates here that we're gonna have the initiative to review sidewalk crosswalks, but what I would also like to see is, I know it wasn't a cheap, I, I believe that's what it was said anyways, where in some areas of the town we kind of shave down where there's uneven sidewalks that are tripping hazards and I don't, I can't remember if that was a cost-effective or a kind of a pricey one, but uh, cost-effective might be to actually spray paint so it's more visible. So if there is a difference in the height between sidewalks or there's cracks or whatever, is there a color of spray paint that we can use to identify these so that our people out walking are going kind to of be more aware of them so that the town is more accessible the so, uh, administration can take that to uh under advisement i guess if that's something that uh, can be done council bob it had to be something brought up at our, at our uh, meeting in the near future which i can attend this week but break mm -hmm. for the transportation yeah, you know, I, uh, speaking with uh, 
uh, Director Harvey that we should be as soon as I, I'm unavailable this week. But I mean, uh, so if we're, getting away, we're getting away from the uh, the uh, so you're out of order. So any further discussion on the resolution? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so 10, 10.1. Resolved that the account as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 31258 to number 31329, totaling $265,085.90 that is listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5417 to number 5420, totaling $103,040.28 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $20,410.37 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? Councilor Medwood. We just have a few this week. Um, the first one being the credit card charge under 31281 for a lunch meeting with Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and CAO. Only it's apparently only three attended, but we're seven dollars and seventy-five cents over our allowance and allowable lunch budgets. Um, Three one two eight four BDR Services Limited, uh, one thousand two hundred and twenty-three dollars and four cents annual inspection and testing of fire alarms at the hall. Was that just the Veterans Hall? And did they test any other of our public or town-owned buildings while they were here? Yeah, I believe they did all three. Two, sorry, because this was the hood range. So this is an additional inspection that we have to do. So they did the Betts Hall and the arena. And the arena? Okay. BDR. I'm hoping at our transportation meeting we're discussing uh, our RFQ for recycling because I see here we spent $52,198.55 for January's recycling. So, so I, I think you have questions, so I think we should, because I don't know who's keeping track of the questions, so let's go back to the first question. So the, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on if we were correct on if there was three or not, and what the reason for that meeting was. What was the second one? I don't need the reason for the meeting, it's more just the dollars and cents. Okay. Okay. The second was the BDR, BDR. which has been answered. Yeah. Um, my next one was, the, yeah, the recycling, and I'm hoping we're putting out an RFQ to hopefully source, because when does our contract end for that? We extended it till the end of March? Yeah, that will be part of the transportation committee meeting. Yeah, okay, good to know. Um, 31300 SPI Health and Safety Inc. Uh, 14565.82 Confined Space Entry Equipment. What is that related to? Go ahead. Uh, so that's fall arrest uh, gear. So our uh, old unit, uh, the parts are no longer available. It has to be recertified every two years, uh, so we had to get new ones. So it's two uh, fall arrest winches, and then the arm that supports it, and the base, and it's uh, modular, so it can we use it in all the different lift stations. When the guys are going down to check on the pumps, they uh, install it in a dab hole, and then go down. And then we also use it if we have to go down into a mad hole or anywhere uh, that we need it for fall arrest replacing uh, a part that we had that we can't get certified anymore because we can't get parts for it. Okay, thank you. And last one is the 31314 Swan River Firefighters Association, $1,395.10 donated funds held in trust. What is that in relation to? See if we can eat it. Do you know uh, in any regard to that? By chance? The town of Swan River had a trust fund for the Swan River Firefighters Association for many years. And with the forming of the fire board, I guess they're going to hold those monies themselves. So that's money that was donated for to the firefighters for whatever fundraisers they've had over the years. Okay. Thank 
you. Councilor Bowman. Um, three one two six six. That's the hot water tank at the Wellness Center. I was under the impression it was thirteen thousand for that thing, but I could be wrong with that. I believe it was um, nineteen, and then we got extended warranty, and then with taxes and installation came to that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further? Okay. All right. For the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes, and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for the matter of assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Matchel Assessment Services on February the 9th, 2024 be made to the 2024 property tax rule with the resulting increases totaling $1,003.26 and the resulting reductions totaling $496.36. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Bobick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, we're moving right down through to members privilege. Councilor Medwood. Uh, well, I was actually skimming through, uh, I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing, but I was skimming through a municipal leader the other day, and uh, there is an article here on the how Harrison Park designed a framework for the short term rental market. So something we all might want to make sure we take a review of since we are dealing with uh, short-term rentals in our accommodation tax and finding a uh, way to register them. Uh, and the other article that I have not read but flagged was uh, FCM investing in Manitoba municipalities because I'm wondering if they're just skimming the headlines here, there's some organic waste to energy and some net zero uh, transformation um, items here. So I'm wondering if there may be some funding for green municipal endeavors, such as a food cycler to reduce our food waste. Um, so something I will be looking at further. And uh, other than that, I was uh, at Trapper's Festival this last weekend. They unfortunately did not have their dog races this year. It was a little, the weather was not cooperating with regards to amounts of snow and ice. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I believe they had a very successful, all the king and queen trapper events were on, the craft show was on, and it was, um, you know, they have a little, um, I forget what they call themselves, but they're little cops that come around the, through the Kinsman Club. And if you're not wearing each year, they have a different uh, item focus. And if you're not wearing that, they will fine you or put you in jail. So you can either pay the fine or you could go to jail. And this year, I think it was fur game last year, it was plaid. But uh, those cops, they were vicious because it didn't matter. They were just collecting money. <laughs> in minds but it was all going to a good cause and supporting the trappers festival so uh, it was a it was a good time it was fun my my wife uh, my wife's cousin actually is one of those cops so i'll have to tell her that he thought she was vicious <laughs> <laughs> well i was i have i wear my moccasins while i'm at the trade show because yeah. then i have leather beads and fur all in one garment and when i show up but i do have fur she said we just want your money i'm like it's for a good cause, I'll do it. <laughs> but they give you a little badge too, but it was all fun. Yeah, it was all fun. Okay, thank you. Uh, Can I ask a question of council's report? Uh, typically not. I thought it answers the question. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can ask her a question afterwards. Okay. Council Bobbin. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to. I spoke a bit at the call meeting when the landfill measurement, that will be an ongoing thing. I'm hoping to get more of a we'll talk with Director Harvey there a little bit more nailed down on it. So with that, that will hopefully give us a really close idea on the landfill uh, life expectancy. So work in progress. Uh, just to make a note, <coughs> thanks to the staff. They've been working some late hours. They're still out there digging, so they know the priorities to these businesses out there. They're still working there right now. So send them a thank you on behalf of all the council I would imagine. 
on the water rates. Uh, I spoke with about when the next airport meeting will be. I haven't got a call back yet, but I'll keep you informed when that happens. Uh, just to, I don't know, Director Harvey probably knows this, but uh, our sweeper that works out at the airport lots, the more or less, you know, as I say, the broom fell off. It's something council needs to be aware of. That thing was bought 25, 30 years ago, used, and was a tow behind. And the man at the shop there made it into a front mount thing. And I mean, it's done its time. It, they've done really good keeping it together. So it'll be something we'll talk a little bit more about that work and what that may cost. Uh, just to, I wonder, Councilor Medwin, I just was uh, curious on a COPP report. Like, is there something that our citizens would you have anything, and it doesn't have to be instantly, but in the near future, you could give us something what's happening, where we're going, what we're doing. Um, actually, interesting that you brought that up because I do need to talk to see a pool afterwards, probably, because we are looking for a new meeting venue, and I'm wondering if <coughs> that's one of the things I can use the town facilities for? Uh, yeah, we have a calendar, but we can, we can discuss that on Friday. Yeah, okay. Or Thursday, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And in the near future, I will be bringing up a resolution, and there will be something uh, similar. I'll be talking to CA Pool about this. There's a point three of a mill that uh, will be put on the taxes that will go directly to G4 for future things in the valley as a whole that G4 will have some money to work with. So that's something that I'm not stressing for this year. That would be for the 2025 taxes. That way we'll have time to meet with G4 and only if all of G4 is on board for this. So that's something we'll kind of get a resolution going together. So with that, I also would like to mention the splash park again. I think we should seriously look at talking with Swan Valley West, what we could do to help with them. If we give them the water mains or something like that, the town of Swan River, we always seem to talk to our local municipalities about helping us with this and helping us with that. I think it's something sometimes for us to step up to the plate. So that's something just food for thought. So also, I'd like to apologize to council and the uh, mayor. Uh, last week's uh, town meeting, I kind of bowled my way into a conversation there that uh, I shouldn't have. and. Uh, the mayor tried to correct me in his polite way, but he, I still pulled away. So I apologize, I won't happen again. Thank you. Your apologies accepted. Thank you. Uh, Council White. Oh. Uh, if anyone would look at these explore passes after, I've got copies of them. The ones who went to the docks were completely different, significantly different than the ones who went to the healthcare aides. They're certainly here and available. Don't take them away though, please. Um, we keep 16 away to the doctors, and uh, Deputy Mayor Morio and I are in the process now of trying to track down those names, address, which are recorded somewhere nearby. I'm going to send a follow-up letter encouraging them to come and see us. Is there a new door password? I don't need to know it now. Not yet. We'll send okay. it. Though. Thank you. And uh, there was one other thing. The booth. Now, you went to the Trappers Festival. Is that an appropriate place for the town of Swan River and or the G4 to set a booth up, and would that promote our communities? That would be something that perhaps maybe the Chamber of Commerce could work on. No, the craft show is more, it's vendor related. It's like selling. I've been sales all my life and the more places you can sell, the better it is, I would say. And uh, I, I really want to, I think I did it already, thank Flavins for the work with the Immigrant Services slide date. If you guys get a chance to uh, see the Flavins people, please thank them. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Councilor Powell. Okay, um, just, a, just a few things here. Um, just wanted to uh, acknowledge that yesterday, Louis Rialde um, and President Chartrand and Premier Walt Canoe also uh, unveiled the recognition that um, as Louis Rialde being the first Manitoba's first Premier. Um, I also want to recognize that um, we had Louis Rialde at the French Center and thank all of those that had volunteered their time. It was all of the locals from Manitoba, Swan River, and Bozeman, I believe. All took part. It was a great day. Lots of kids were able to take part in lots of different activities, and it was really great learning. Um, I guess celebrating heart health nutrition. Um, we're having a great big thing on this February 26th. Um, 
we also have a great big volunteer tax. Our val volunteer tax is taking place um, next month. So that starts March 2nd for anybody who needs their, their taxes done. Um, green team grants are due very soon. Um, they're due in the next few days, so that's another thing. Um, and just as another thing, uh, just a recognition to uh, Kenny Monroe from the Albert Chartrand Friendship Center for his years of service. Um, he's moving on to a new position, um, a new opportunity for him, and just want to recognize him for all the great things he's done for the Albert Chartrand Friendship Center. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, on the green team, I'll, I'll comment that uh, I've been nudging uh, recreation on that one for the last little bit, so they, they are We're on. They're, they're aware yeah. of the application process. So, but thanks for bringing it up, though. Uh, with okay, so this is something that goes back to earlier in the meeting about uh, reconciliation and uh, school division with uh, the committee with the uh, Reeves and myself. Uh, bringing in a speaker is actually what we're working on and um, the date that we kind of are trying to work on is April the 22nd or April the 29th um, so once we kind of get closer to trying to find somebody that will fit within the budget um, then we will be able to announce that time but that's kind of where we're looking at is around those two dates um, I've sent that back to uh, the school division which I haven't seen confirmation yet but uh, council will see more information on that uh, in the time. So, uh, and, and uh, student councillor Campama, I'll, I'll let you know also about that because uh, we would want you to, to be a part of that as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Sorry. I want to just say a couple things. You know, thank you to the municipality or the all municipalities with our uh, medical service group on just that uh, item there that Council I was speaking on and recognizing some of our uh, health care aides and, and uh, the, the, the letter that we got from Mr. Uh, Stock was, was really good and I think all the members of Council had a chance to see that but they were really kind of floored by the recognition that they received when they don't really receive some of that and, and, and these people that, you know, all health care workers are very much important but you know these uh, individuals I think sometimes get kind of left out too so I think this was a really good thing and it's positive and uh, steps in the right direction anyway so I I, I thank our uh, group for working on that and, and of course from the support of our uh, Valley municipalities uh, on this and, and all the initiatives that we will we'll work on in the in the years to come um, grand opening at Thunder Hill this weekend. They're going to open it back up Friday night. Get out there, dust off those skis, Councilor Bobic, and uh, go out night skiing. And uh, then on Saturday, they're going to have the christening of the new chalet and uh, be a great event, uh, sponsors and so forth, and everybody else to go out and enjoy. Hopefully, uh, I know that the weather sounds like it's going to be. A little bit on the mild side again, but it's been a tough year for, for Thunder Hill, but no, nonetheless, they're going to move ahead with their grand opening, and I think it'll be a great thing. And it's been a great thing for, for the Valley, so uh, yeah, I, I wish them all the best there, too. Going back to um, the recognition of our Swan River Fire Department, and, you know, we just can't forget about, you know, like when I looked at that plaque and I thought, you know, 1908, you know, the people that, you know, were organizing to protect our community when it was forming back in 1908. Could you imagine what uh, what they were dealing with and the equipment that they had and, and all that kind of stuff and how that has you know evolved and changed and, and all that as, as they were trailblazers, I guess you can kind of say, but um, we definitely have a, a great group of people that uh, do uh, the service for our community and, and saving lives and saving buildings and so forth. But um, Great community people. We're very, very, very proud of uh, having them uh, do the work that they do for us, and the work that they'll do for Swan Valley Fire Department. You know, moving forward, and of course, what Councillor Powell had mentioned with uh, Director Monroe, I did follow him too, and, and congratulate him on his years of service. Uh, you know. Uh, Big shoes to fill there, and uh, you know he's done a, a great uh, you know service to our community. And I know he's not going to be going away anytime soon. But um, the, the, the Albert for the Chartrand Friendship Center has, is a is a big piece to our community, 
and uh, and uh, him, he's been a big part of that moving forward. And I know that he'll still be be there as well in the years to come. I believe that is it for me. So I then shall move on to CEO Pool. Uh, just to let everyone know, there's a Parkland Rangers U15 playoff game tonight, and there's some uh, Valley, you know, players from the Valley that are on there. So go Rangers! It's where I'll be going after the meeting. Sending my support. Good. Student uh, Council Campana. Well, uh, in relation to what you're talking about, the firefighters, you know, starting at 19. I'm not sure trailblazer is the right word to use. Probably that. not. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> um, besides that, though, I look forward to hearing from both of you and, uh, yeah, not much else to say. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harvey. Uh, Councillor Balbert touched on it, but yeah, just to send out a thanks to the Public Works guys because <clears throat> they had several digs this past week and uh, digs are long as it is but when you add in frost and they got to rip through the frost then it goes it takes a long time and they're out there in the cold and finishing up you know 11 o'clock at night midnight and uh, yeah there was three digs last week and one the second section like those bolts let loose but then they backfilled it and then the bolts let loose on the other side so they had to go back down. And that's a bit demoralizing when you've just dug it and then you gotta go down, but they're out there and that was on a Friday and they were late, so yeah, I appreciate that from you guys. Yeah, just to again thank them uh, from the council as well, just because, you know, winter time is the toughest, you know, working in, in conditions like that and it's cold, you know. You know, your hands are getting cold. I just can't imagine working down there. So, you know, we do, uh, we, are, we are thinking about them and we do thank them. Director Clausen. Uh, nothing specific to report on, just uh, lots of pretty big projects on the go right now with some significant research and work and stuff, but uh, I'm hoping it all comes together for the <coughs> meeting. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. CFO Ganita. Working on year end, waiting for information from other directors for the year. Sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm working on completing the 2023 year end and, and uh, waiting for information from other directors to okay. do that. Perfect, thank you. All right, well with that, Resolve of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.03 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. We are now.